Mr President, I'd like to start by thanking the member for Elwick for bringing the, this issue relating to the education of our children to this chamber. Uh, I acknowledge the member's previous experience as an educator here in Tasmania. It offers a really valuable opportunity for an issue to be raised by a member who has direct experience in the field. And as a parent of children who attend government schools, I'm particularly interested in what happens in education. And like so many in our community, I follow results and reports about NAPLAN closely. Uh, this year, I feel fortunate to be in a position to discuss this issue, not just as a parent, but as the member for Nelson here in this place. Today, the member for Elwick has raised his concerns about NAPLAN and asks us to support the motion that Tasmania join other states in undertaking a comprehensive review of the program. Uh, and what a healthy debate we are having on this matter. Um, before speaking in more detail on this motion, however, I just wanted to take a moment to note the fact that this has been brought here in the Upper House by a member who's not of the government during private members' time, and it's enjoyed a fulsome debate and discussion. The motion's being brought by a member of the Labor Party, and I would take the opportunity to remind the Labor Party of their own words in this place just last month when a motion similarly was brought for debate by the member for Murchison during private members' time. I'm going to quote what the Labor member for Romney said at that time, and I'm going to substitute the words reviewing NAPLAN in that quote for the words pill testing. And I quote, Mr Acting President, the only way to achieve the outcome supporters of reviewing NAPLAN want is for the government to lead on this issue. This motion will not make reviewing NAPLAN any more likely, any, any more or less likely to be introduced in Tasmania. That power rests solely with the government. It will not work if they are backed into a corner. It will not work if they are forced into a position. On this, they cannot be forced into a position. Legislative change will not compel the government to act. Motions in the parliament will not compel the government to act. None of us here today can compel the government to act on this issue. End of quote. I didn't agree with what the member for Romney said at that time, but if the Labor Party stand by what it said at that time, I see no reason that the same rationale wouldn't be applied here with this motion. And in the same way, the Labor members mm. then failed to engage in a genuine and considered debate on pill testing, <coughs> following their argument that they made, we would similarly absent ourselves from considered debate on this motion. Fortunately, we haven't. The pill testing motion called on the government to consider something. This motion now calls on the government to consider something. I highlight this here not to under undermine this particular motion, which I squarely support, but to remind those who move, who move this motion that this, what we are doing right now, is our job. And that job is raising issues of importance brought to us by the community, engaging in a high standard of good faith debate, as exampled today here, arguing for positions that we believe are good public policy, evidence informed and in the best interests of the Tasmanian people. When we shirk the opportunity to do that, or indeed when we seek to undermine the very value of our chamber to do that, we weaken our democratic process and we let down those who elected us to represent them here. I hope never again to hear an argument put by a member of this chamber that suggests our time and efforts here are for naught. Mr President, I would now move back to the motion at hand which raises the concern about NAPLAN and asks us to support the motion that Tasmania join other states in undertaking a comprehensive review of the program. This is something that I support in principle for two key reasons. First, because Tasmania and our unique circumstances in this state should not be ignored when doing this timely comprehensive review. And second, because comprehensive evaluation is part of good policy making and there have been enough concerns raised about NAPLAN that this review is warranted. And I don't believe that the other reviews that are currently in play or recently completed fit the bill as a comprehensive review at this time. But before I speak to concerns, um, I'd like to reflect on what NAPDAN is intended to do. Initially, just very briefly, initially when national standardised testing was first implemented in 2008, policymakers hoped that NAPLAN would help provide quality data that could be used by parents, schools and policymakers to improve our education outcomes in Australia. Proponents of NAPLAN will point out that it helps identify strengths and the needs of students and therefore help improve resource allocation. The member for Mersey spoke about and quoted material on the positive contribution it's hoped that NAPLAN provides and I agree that that potentially is there and we've seen a good effect in many ways from the testing. 
An argument, <clears throat> an argument made about NAPLAN is it can help identify schools which are maximising student learning. And as the member for Mer Mersey pointed out, we can learn from schools that are doing well uh, and apply that in other schools. Achieving this, however, can be more challenging than it sounds, given there are so many factors at play that make every cohort and every school different. NAPLAN clearly has potential merits in my mind, but intent is always moderated by design and by implementation and by the passage of time, which is likely why we've seen a number of well-publicised issues with the policies rollout and over time its implementation. There are issues that I would like to mention and add my voice to, speaking both as a member of this parliament and as, and as a parent of children who have sat many, many NAPLAN tests. One issue that concerns me, it's been raised here today already, but I'll repeat it, is the pressure that's felt by students around NAPLAN time. It seems every year there are more and more reports telling of stress amongst students sitting NAPLAN tests. Tests are no doubt a part of life. Tests are hard to avoid, and throughout our life we'll have to sit them at one time or another. Uh, it's perhaps understandable that some hold the view that students should simply learn to deal with it. I believe this risks understating the importance and the impact that anxiety and stress have on young children, young people and children. In supporting this motion, I'm not calling for an end to NAPLAN testing or testing altogether. What I am asking is perhaps through review we can conduct it, we can find a way to improve standardised testing uh, that <coughs> accounts for this rising tendency to stress amongst young students. And undertakes standardised testing or other testing that's meaningful in a way that doesn't generate and perhaps generate an increasing level of stress amongst students, particularly when that some of those students we are testing are as young as eight years old. As has already been noted, technology concerns in regards to NAPLAN are regularly raised. With the shift to online testing this year, we saw widespread chaos actually in its rollout here in Tasmania. Technical issues affected so many schools. I understand educators and students weren't able to access the test on time and then once students had been able to access the test, there were serious issues that meant students being, were being dropped out for several minutes or having work lost. I could only imagine the additional stress that that caused to those students in those schools, not just to those who may have been experiencing the issues directly, but to those around them who were also trying to undertake their test uh, in the midst of that disruption. Following this year's move to online testing, the federal government claimed that 97% of the online tests were unaffected. That may be so in other states, but from what I hear and I have been told about the situation in Tasmania, there were many, many schools affected and technology issues were a, a cause of havoc uh, in those schools. I think that has clearly an impact not just on our students and ed our educators, but also on the quality of the results. I was pleased that Tasmania did not repeat the testing as a result of those disruptions, and I think it was a good decision from the Minister to not repeat the testing. Something that concerns me quite distinctly is that uh, before NAPLAN tests come around each May, we know that classroom time is spent on preparing for or teaching to the test. This takes away time, not just from the curriculum, but also other learning areas, and also means the data we collect isn't necessarily a well-rounded reflection of our students' abilities. And we have potentially taken away valuable teaching time for other important aspects of the curriculum. I also think that potentially this teaching to the test tendency contributes to the importance and the potential for stress that's put on the testing when it does arrive in May. The fact that this um, happens is understandable given, given the growing pressure on principals and senior leaders and teachers to perform well in NAPLAN testing. Educational experts make the point that this pressure is only made worse by the competitive nature of the My School website where school performance is compared and is a tool quite often and regularly in school selection. Concern about ranking does unfortunately appear to be contributing to reports of students being taken out of testing for fear of performing poorly in the tests. And that just goes against all advice and all aspiration we have for inclusion in our schools. It's important not to forget that teachers at these schools already test students in order to determine student achievement. Yes, for administrators, NAPLAN helps provide 
a snapshot indication of how education is being <coughs> delivered and outcomes are happening in this country. But I'm prompted to ask to what degree it materially helps our teachers and our students. The member for Elwick spoke to this in detail in his uh, contribution, so I will just mention briefly that some of the points of concern being that NAPLAN results aren't released until several months after the test. In that time, teachers and students will have moved on, making it difficult to work with the data that's collected. The data itself is also weakened by the fact that it focuses on attainment rather than growth. The first priority of the latest Gonski report emphasises the need to shift from attainment to growth. This simple idea recognises that we are all different, we learn differently, we start at different points and we progress at different rates. In order to achieve the sh this shift, the report, the Gonski, latest Gonski report states, and I quote, teachers must be given practical support by creating an online formative assessment tool to help diagnose a student's current level of knowledge, skill and understanding, to identify the next steps in learning, to achieve the next stage in growth and to track student, student progress over time against a typical development trajectory. NAPLAN is a summative assessment tool, as we've already heard today. It's focused on attainment and unfortunately does not fit with this recommendation uh, of the latest uh, intelligence in this educational space. This is an important point because I worry that we're failing to listen to evidence on this issue. A second key recommendation from Gonski 2.0 highlights the need for Australia to establish a national research and evidence institute focused on improving educational delivery. <coughs> now, I'm given to understand that the UK is leading the way in this and perhaps Australia should follow their lead or take note. In the UK, they have the Education Endowment Fund. This institute funds and collates independent research into education policies from across the UK and it measures them against three very simple criteria. How much does the policy cost? How much impact does it have? And what is the strength of the evidence that supports it? An institute like this in Australia, which is dedicated to bottom-up research, could provide independent analysis on what really works in schools and promote more of that school-to-school -school learning that the member for Mersey spoke about too. By adapting this research into practical advice for educators, we may actually be able to fulfil the vision of NAPLAN, which sees schools learn from, uh, sees schools learn from other successful schools. Indeed, at a local level, I wonder at the potential for our Peter Underwood Centre at UTAS to more actively perform this function. Education in Australia has unfortunately been a policy area which has been too often used for political point scoring and division. Working towards improved evidence-based policy and practice is a step forward in not only taking the politics out of education, but ultimately improving how we educate our children. The motion that we're discussing here today is potentially a step in that direction. It's not calling upon the government to throw out NAPLAN altogether. Instead, it calls upon the government to consider joining a review, a comprehensive review. This would mean Tasmania joining Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria in implementing a comprehensive review of NAPLAN at this time to inform going forward in the most constructive way for the benefit of our children. As I've said, I support this, as it would give Tasmania a voice at the table to ensure that we, as a smaller and unique state, have our experiences and concerns heard and listened to and built into the structure of the review. I support it also because I feel that there have now been enough concerns raised about NAPLAN by a variety of stakeholders that a thorough evaluation is due. I think that it's a real shame that the federal government has ruled out a full review of NAPLAN at this stage. It concerns me that a government may be so against a process which ultimately is aimed at improving policy and improving outcomes for our children. Their reluctance, their reluctance has led for this push towards a breakaway review, which I would prefer to see led by the federal government as a national review. However, in the absence of that, I believe Tasmania should consider being involved in the breakaway review which is being developed currently. I'll just, uh, just before I call uh, the next speaker, I'll just remind honourable members. Uh